It's interesting to note that when a when the Lord sends a judgment on the land, um, such as this ice storm that uh, was sent across the land, you know, before uh, I was in prayer and really crying out to God for the church and that he would avenge us of the adversary and crying out to him to bring that to pass. And then I got on the Internet and saw this storm on Noah that was coming from clear across Oklahoma, clear up into the East Coast. And I was just like, whoa, this ice storm is coming, you know. And the Lord talks about the ice storm. I mean, he talks about the ice in the word about who can stand against his ice. Amen. And it is it is a judgment. But in the midst of the judgment, you know, the Lord tells his people that he will take care of us. Amen. And, you know, it's interesting during a time like this how the beast nature of people really comes out the flesh. Um because they don't have their power and their power literally is the electric grid you know even spiritually seems to be but our power as children of god is the lord jesus christ the holy Holy spirit that's what we do you know we we um we've come to say oh the power's out the power's out and if you look at telephone lines you know electric lines you have that cross beam that goes across it looks like a cross and man's power is dependent upon um having enough money having enough of the world's resources in order to get what man deems to be power something that man discovered that god created how to harness it and the lord jesus tells us in luke 12 uh, starting in verse 24 Go ahead, honey. You want to read that? Yeah, I was reading this this morning. Start at verse 22, honey. Okay. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens. For they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you with taking thought can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? The Lord is telling us in this scripture, you know, why are you taking thought for these things? Right. Why are you taking thought for these things? See, and God says for his people that they see evil coming and they prepare, you know, they're prudent. Right. And so um, we we have seen for many years, over well over 10 years, 12 years now, this evil uh, coming upon the earth. And it is man's control of man, the governments of man putting other men under their thumbs and controlling. And they use food. They use the electric grid. Mm-hmm. They use uh, the inventions of man that God abhors and detests and hates. And they use all these different things, uh, materialism, to crush people. They want to control people. And people think their power lies in all the things of the material realm. And Jesus says right here, you know, consider their ravens. They neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn. And God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? You know, that ice storm hit. We have a fence around our yard. and We have a fence yard here. And here comes a little cardinal lands right on the fence, right on top of the ice. He just stands there with his little foot, you know. And, and the ice is not bothering the cardinal. He goes down and finds something to eat on the ground, you know. He's big and fat. And, and he's fat and he's <laughs> warm, you know. And, and we're inside the house. We got the fire going, you know. We have to be careful how we walk on the ice. And, and But the cardinal was well taken care of. God took care of that bird and fed him and took care of him. 
and people all over where we are, they have freezers full of food, I mean, full of meat packed, a 20 cubic foot freezer packed full of meat. And lots of people have two or three freezers at their house. And so when the power, man's electric power is cut off, all their meat begins to thaw. And some people lose whole freezers full of meat. Some people lose uh, refrigerators full of food. They won't give it to people. It's they just, it just, it, it's very interesting how people how, are yeah. in times like and, that. And it's just a, it's just an amazing thing because uh, we have to keep our focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to keep our focus on Him at all times and know that He is the one providing what we need. You know. You know, we found that um, he was talking about people with their freezers. You know. You find out really where the hearts of people are in times like this, who the real givers are and who are the takers and the hoarders and the ones with just a murderous, envious heart. And, you know, we saw people even right where we are on this mountain where would hoard their food and let it all ruin and spoil rather than give it out to the people around. And then there were people that, that did give it out, you know, rather than have it spoil, but See, God is going to try the hearts of men. And, man, I tell you, this ice storm tried the hearts of men. And, you know, the Lord tells us to seek first the kingdom of God. Amen. And all these things all will be these things. added to us. What are all these things? It's everything we need to right. eat. Mm-hmm. All we need for clothing. The cares of the body, yeah. Shelter, everything. See, yeah. we have been bought in. We have bought in as a, as a society into the lie that we have to. Uh, slave and work for the man in order to have these things that we are our, our soul man desires you know it desires nice clothes it desires a nice place to live warm place you know it to keep up with the joneses so to speak or a nice place out in the country you know so to speak or whatever a nice car to drive got to get the new model you know and and all these things are a snare see and most of God's people in America are bound up with debt. They're bound up. Yeah. The economy's crashing. I read a story this morning. In December and January, over 1,500,000 jobs were lost in America. Okay. And we are... In January? In, Janu- in December and January together, over 1,500,000 jobs yeah. were lost. And they're calling for bank runs by the middle of march okay the middle of march okay that's like a month away from now okay where are you going to be okay where do you live right now you live in a big city okay if god has you in a big city you stay there if god's telling you to get out get out you got time to get out and don't worry about what you're going to eat or where you're going to stay see some people they 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 have places to go other people don't. We didn't have nowhere to go when God sent us out, but God led he us. Said go. <laughs> and and He led us to the place He wanted us to go. He right, opened up the doors right. He wants to walk through. Amen. You know, you know the thing is, you know, God has been doing this preparation. This we have been in the time of preparation for a while. Long time. For the day. Yeah. And you know, if if you have not been obeying the Lord and doing what the Lord's been prompting you to do, you know, putting away those things. If he's told you to sell and sell your land, sell your house and do this and that, and you just haven't done it because you just don't think that the time is now. And, you know, the, the only thing left for you to do now is to fall to your knees and repent to God for your disobedience, Amen. And not obeying him, and then pray to to God for mercy and ask him to show you what to do now Amen. because we the Lord has been preparing us he's been preparing his people you know we've been preaching this message for over 12 years now to get ready and get prepared and and learn how to live off the grid learn how to 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 live roughly right. because that's where it's coming learn to learn how see. to wash your clothes by yeah. hand it's coming there but yeah. the first preparation the very first is spiritual right so I tell you, it's like, you know, if, if we have not uh, developed this and we have not developed a trust in God and a dependence on God, and, and now all of a sudden, boom, here we are right in the middle of it, and we right. don't know how to handle it, we don't know what to do, right. the only thing left for you to do, like I said, is fall on your knees, repent to God for disobedience, right. repent to Him for being caught up in the world and, and in things of the world, right. and ask Him what to do next. Right. That's the only thing left to do. You Amen. know, the Lord says, consider the lilies. 
you know, consider all these things. Consider Solomon and all his glory. wasn't even a red like one of these lilies, a lily growing that God created. And if God clothed the grass, man, which is in the field today and tomorrow is cast into the oven. If he clothes the grass, how much more will he clothe us? O oh, ye what? of little oh, faith. Ye of little a faith. little faith. See, Jesus says we're of little faith. See, we think, oh, you know, can you see Peter after the resurrection? You know, no, no, no. no. You know, and, and after the resurrection, don't don't worry about the time. Let's just talk. Okay. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise. Let's just preach and teach and praise God and love Him. Hallelujah. Anyway, Peter after the resurrection, what did he do? He didn't. He didn't know what to do. You know, Jesus appeared to him a few times and. And they're they're sitting there, you know, all sitting around. Peter says, "I go a fishing, you know. He he's going. He's got to be doing something. He's going going to go fishing. So he goes fishing. He didn't catch nothing. See. And the next morning, they caught nothing. And there's some guy standing on the shore, and he says, "Hey, have you caught anything, children?" He says, "No, we ain't caught nothing. Been working all night to so cast the net on the right side of the ship, and you'll find." And they did, and they hauled in a load of fish, and John said, "It's the Lord. See, it's the Lord. See, that's the that's the Lord. See, and the Lord was teaching Peter, you know, look to me. Right. What are you What are you looking to going out and doing Listen this stuff to me. for? Listen to me. Listen Do to what me. I say Amen. to you. Amen. Amen. And you feed know? the sheep. Feed the lambs. Take care of my flock. You know, he says to seek not <laughs> what we will eat." Seek not what we shall eat or what we will drink. And this is what really got me this morning. Neither be ye of doubtful mind. Of doubtful mind, of anxious mind, you know, of uh, being in anxious thought about things and stuff, you know. Uh, you know, in this ice storm, you know, there may have been people, God had been moving on for years to change where they're living or to uh, revamp things like making their home to be uh, able to be without electricity or getting a wood stove or some things and they just didn't listen, didn't think that that would come, you know, didn't think the time was here and didn't do what God said. And then the, so they might have sat in darkness and they might have been cold too or had to go to shelters, you know. I'm telling you, when you obey the Lord God Almighty and do what he says, he's going to have you where he wants you to be, and he's also going to provide what you need. And we are perfect examples of that. You know, he's the one that provides the water. Amen. The running springs that come out of the, come out of the ground. That's God. That's not man's invention. Right. God hates man's invision, inv inventions, like Amen. John said. That's what the Bible says. He and, hates the inventions of man. Hallelujah. But, you know, he provides. He says that your waters will be sure in that time. Amen. Okay, our waters were sure in this time of devastation. Amen. All Hallelujah. Right? And the thing is, is, the amazing thing about the whole ice storm deal was we were here on this mountain, and, you know, it was so far. We didn't have any electricity, but so what? You know, it was what? like, I mean, if the electricity goes out for a month, or two or three or a whole year. I don't really care. It doesn't matter. Because it's not going to matter to us, see, because we're not snared. Right. Now, we're not better than other people because we're not snared. We're better in the fact that we're not snared, okay? But I have to examine my heart to say, Lord, is there anywhere else I'm snared, right. you see, because there could be, see? So that doesn't make us perfect or better than the rest of the body, no. you know? But what it is is, you can be unsnared right in the middle of Houston, Texas. You can be unsnared right in the middle of, you know, Boston, Massachusetts, or New York City, or L.A., or Chicago, or wherever you are. You can be unsnared from man's system. And the way you do it is by the heart, see. And your heart is totally surrendered to Jesus. Surrender, see. And you don't, you don't have all these things that are not controlling you. You have complete and total use of of the things that God's provided you, but you don't let those things control you. You don't run to man when you lose them, see. You know, um, it's so important for us to learn the lessons God's trying to show us because the times are not going to get better. They're going to get worse. Amen. Because that's what the Bible says. That's it's right. going to be worse and worse until the Lord comes. That's right. 
And, I mean, he's wanting and trying to prepare his people for this time. But a lot of his people don't want to be repaired. Uh, well, they don't want to be repaired either. That's right. They don't and want they don't want to be uh, prepared for what's coming. They want to turn a blind eye to it. Like it's not going to happen or like they're going to be whisked away before it happens. And it's just, that's just not true. Right. And so our dependence has to be just completely and solely on the Lord, knowing, you know, the devil's going to throw all kinds of stuff at us, doubt, fears, just all kinds of stuff. But we have to quote the word back to him and said, no. My God said he will supply my needs. Amen. My God has not given me a spirit of fear. Amen. You know, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. You know, we have to know these things. We have to quote the word to one another. Right. And we have to encourage each other in the truth. See, that truth that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Because, hey... That's the only way we're going to make it. You know, Sharon was talking about preparation, the day of preparation. And that's, the Lord has a day of preparation. And his day of preparation began in about 1900 when the chariots began to jostle in the streets, as it says in Nahum chapter 2. And and, and they will seem like torches and run like the lightnings, you know, and jostle once one against another. And today we see that. And there was massive pile-ups, you know, on the highway out here. You know, not far from here, um, all these horseless chariots crashing because of the ice, you know. And there's nothing man's going to do to stop God's judgments yeah. that God is sending to this yeah. land of America. Mm -hmm. There was a tornado a couple of days ago went right through Edmond, Oklahoma. One went, one went through Lone Grove, Oklahoma. Fifteen people were killed in Lone Grove and... and uh, these judge, this is February, okay? Spring hasn't even come. Tornado season is not really starting until the springtime. And so God's judgments are coming. God's people need to be prepared for what's coming. It's not time to play and, you know, and just, uh, it's time for God's people to weep between the porch and the altar and seek the Lord for what he would have them do to be more prepared for these judgments that God is sending. And as God begins to judge his church, which he judges his church first, that's where the judgment begins. Right. Let us yield up to God. Right. Everything. All of our complete and total being. I mean, die to ourselves. Let's give it to God. Let's trust him. Let's give our whole life. Let's die to ourselves. Let's take up our cross and follow him and walk with him. You know, I was going to say that um, some of God's people might feel like they've been judged in this ice storm. And, you know, like you said, judgment begins in the house of God. Maybe he has judged you in this ice storm. Amen. And if that's the case, then the only thing to do is to fall to your knees and cry out to God for mercy and forgiveness and ask him to show you where you've erred. And, uh, and you know, all of us need to do that. You know, all of us need to constantly be, Lord, show me my heart. Show me if there's any wicked way in my heart. You know, and like I said, it was very interesting watching people and listening, listening to people during this time because... Um, they just, you know, they didn't understand us because we were like, we were like uh, peaceful and happy during this time and, and actually glad almost that it was off because it, there was such peace. Yeah. And they just could not understand that and could not understand why we were not in a frenzy like they were. And, you know, also, boy, I tell you, the things will manifest too, um, the hatred that people have toward God's true people because we even saw it in this time, you know, because they hate those that are in peace during yeah. a time when you're not supposed to be in peace and they're not in peace. So why are you in peace? And I'm murderously angry at you for being in peace. But see, God said he told us all in the word that this would all happen. He told us all beforehand. 
you know, and the time and the thing for us all to do now is let the Lord prepare us. Purge us. And purge us. Prune us. For what's to come still. Amen. Because. It's going to get worse. Yes, it is. And, you know, that's the only thing to do is fall on the knees, cry out to God for mercy and forgiveness, you know. And I know a lot of people um, lost their homes in this ice storm and some lost their lives. Some lost some of their families. Um, and we just need to seek the Lord continually. You know, he said, for all these things do the nations of the world seek after what things? The things that have to do with the body, what you eat, what you drink, right. what you put on. The nations of the world seek after these things. And your father knoweth that ye have need of these things. So right. see, the Father knows what we have need of before we ever ask Him. Right. And He also says, you know, before you ever ask me for it, I've already given it to you. I've already sent it to you. It's already coming. It's already on the right. way. Right. And, you know, we found this was such a... You know, food was being brought to our <laughs> door practically every day during this ice storm. And it just, it was like... Wow, you know, every time we turned around, here was a bag of groceries, <laughs> and we were just like, "Wow, Lord, you are so good," you know, yeah. and and even things, you know, like, you know, that the flesh likes, like chocolate and stuff like that, you know, <laughs> nothing that you need like that. But it, the Lord even cares about yeah. those little, you know, desires, you right. know, kind of like that. Right. And your sweet tooth, you know, yeah. you wouldn't think God would care about <laughs> your sweet tooth, but He does, you know. Hallelujah. But anyway. You know, but look, yeah, that's but right. But rather, but rather, in verse 31 of Luke 12, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God. Amen. Seek the things of God. Seek Amen. Him. Seek the Heavenly Father. Seek what He has, what He is, what to behold Him. Seek Him. But rather seek Him. Seek the kingdom of God. And all these things, did He say some? Maybe some. No. He said all. All these things. All these things shall be added unto you. Unto you. Hallelujah. What you eat, what you drink, what you put on. Amen. You know, the Lord makes sure we have shelter. And, you know, even we knew that something must be coming because all the other times we would only where we were parked, where the Lord had us park in the motor home, we never had a building attached to the motor home ever in all this four and a half years we've been out. Right. But this year, the Lord put it in our heart, you know, and gave us the materials and gave us we the said, stove. okay, Lord, if this is what you want us to do, then I pray we pray you bring us a building. There it is. And so he did. He brought us a building, and we went up to the person's house and tore it down and brought it back and built it back up here by the motorhome. And then we prayed for a wood stove, and the Lord gave us a wood stove. You know, it's and we knew something, you know, because the Lord had never done this in all the times. So right. the Lord, he is always going to prepare his children for what's to come. Amen. You know, the Lord is the ark. And and we are in the ark, so to speak, like Noah. And, you know, the Lord says, come in and shut, and he shuts the door. And, you know, what was Noah doing in the ark? He wasn't worried about the flood. No. He wasn't even here in the flood, no. actually. He just was going around feeding the feeding animals. Feeding the animals, taking and, care of them, doing you know, what he had to do. Taking care of his family, Amen. and they were talking and And the destruction, and, and when, he, when the door was open... The wicked were no, no more. more. And yeah, right. there was a clean earth. And, right. you know, in this time, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. Mm -hmm. Those who are truly focused on the Lord and seeking him, they're going to be so hidden right. in this hour in certain ways. Now, right. it doesn't mean you're not going to suffer. But they're going to be so hidden that you will notice that a lot of this evil is just going to go around you. It's going to go over you. It's going to go 
just beside you. A thousand shall nations, fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, Amen. but it shall not come nigh thee. Amen. And and you will see the wicked are no more. You know, and and look at verse twenty nine. We talked about that this morning. And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. You know, being anxious. You know, a doubtful mind and. Like when an emergency arises and and there's a tragedy, a hurricane, a tornado, an ice storm, a flood, or whatever, and and people are they in the Christian, you know, they get into a doubtful mind. What am I going to do? Oh my God, you know, and they're looking just focused on the natural, temporal realm, all the stuff that that God says is not going to last forever. See, well, the reason they're doing that is because that's what they've been doing before, and now it's all gone, and their life's bound up in their stuff, and that's what they're doing. And Jesus right here tells us, do not be of a doubtful mind. Don't be anxious. Don't be fluctuating back and forth. Okay? Be set on him right now before uh, destruction hits your city. Amen. Be set on the Lord. Amen. So that when it hits, you're already set on the Lord. You're not going to be surprised. You're not going to be shocked when these things happen. Right. You know, do you know America? Remember, we, you know, as a nation, we've killed almost 60 million six zero million of our own people you know mm -hmm. and these are this is genocide this is total uh, massacre of Richness. human life of the innocence yeah. now not just these are the innocents yeah. and God destroyed the temple yes. that Solomon built the greatest building ever built God's house that God came down in the Shekinah glory okay the Ark of the Covenant was there God burnt it to the ground because of the innocents that were slain in Jerusalem okay that's why Jerusalem today is desolate okay there's nothing holy about the city of Jerusalem right now okay the people there running it are evil people okay they're not holy people okay so let's keep our focus on Jesus keep your focus on Jesus Hallelujah. praise the Lord amen you know um some people um, might not have electricity yet. They might not have what they feel like they need yet. You know, I would encourage you, get in your closet with the Lord and just seek his face and repent. If you need to repent, cry out to him for mercy, ask him what he wants you to do. And I want to pray even right now for those people. Yes, Lord, amen. Thank I just you, Father. Pray that, Thank um, you, Lord. You would just fall on oh your people gosh. in a mighty way today, Thank Lord. You, Lord. Just with uh, with conviction, Lord, of of whatever needs, you know. That you want to prune, that right, you want to take, Lord. Right. That you want to. And Lord, I them. pray that uh, you will provide the needs of your people, and you will have mercy on your people, Lord. Hallelujah. And you will just bring them into a more intimate walk with you, Lord, and separate from the world, and separate from. Uh, possessions lord and amen, separate amen, from amen, everything amen. but you and yes. lord i pray you prepare your people and i pray you give them ears to hear and eyes to see what you're doing in this hour lord Hallelujah. and i thank you for uh, your provision i thank you for your protection and i thank you lord that um, even now i know that you are sharpening the hearing of your people amen to hear your voice lord Yes. And to know what you want them to do, Father. Hallelujah. Yes. Lord. And to separate themselves from everything that's not of you, yes. everything that's false, everything that has nothing to do with you, really. Hallelujah. I pray in Jesus' name. And Lord, yes. And we just ask you that you would clothe us all, Lord, with your glory today. Clothe your people, Lord, with your glory today, with your satisfaction. Show your people, Lord, that the areas they need to get right. Help us all, Lord. 